Hey, Indian Town, Nomo here. This one will be short and sweet. We've been talking online with a couple of people, Heidi Dove Hanford being one of them. And you know what? It's just, it's getting old and it's getting tired to sit there and try and play ping pong of ethics with someone that has no morals. Listen, Tam has a suggestion for the new council. Here it is. Are we ready? Change Howard Brown's contract. Take away his ability to own an active government consulting firm while he's in the employ as village manager. See, as his company is a legitimate private Florida corporation, it's not possible for you as the council or the people of Indian Town without legal action to obtain bank records or audit that corporation, thus making it a transparency issue as well as a conflict of interest. Now, without any assumption, the ethical breach can easily be explained for everyone that's not understanding it right off the bat. And we didn't get it at first either. We had to really put a couple of pieces together to begin to understand why this is a bad idea. Now, if you will stick with us, here we go. Let's just say, and he does, the village manager has the authority given by you, the council, to select consultants and village contractors via his contract, right? You guys say, hey, go find us two or three guys out there. Get us a best deal. Get us a consultant. Let's talk about the road work. Let's talk about fire rescue. Let's talk about whatever. Now, you've given him that ability. You've also given him the ability to have a consulting corporation. Now, here's where it starts to get interesting. The ability for a village manager with certifications and memberships in consulting organizations like the ICMA makes the opportunity for kickbacks very easy. Now see, while everything so far is legal, given the authority the council has given away, it does not still preclude a village manager, not necessarily Howard Brown, but any village manager in this position from negotiating a 20 or 30 percent cut of the total amount spent by the village for consultancies as finders fees. Not to say this occurred again. Again, this is presumptive explanation, but it demonstrates a, con a potential conflict. And it also shows Mr. Brown again in bad ethical posture. Now, to break it down and make it a little easier, Howard, for instance, let's, let's just say he calls Mike Iacona as he did, to come in and tell everyone all that ever needed to be known about fire rescue. Imagine, if you will, that both were and are members of the same international consultancy brotherhood known as the ICMA. So what we're saying in our example of potential for breach of ethics is this. A phone call or an email was probably or could be made, more than likely a call though. Imagine, okay, let's just do this. Imagine this. The village manager makes a call. Mike, Howard Brown, president of a local government consulting group in Indian Town, Florida. Hi, yeah, uh, I saw your name on the ICA internal bulletin board. Yeah, good, thanks. Look, real quick, because I don't want to keep you. I'm sure you're busy. Oh, great. Listen, we're a brand new village in Indian Town. Huh? Oh, yeah, <laughs> from the ground new. Yeah, well... Good question. The reason for the call was because we're going to be discussing a new fire rescue operation coming up, and I wanted to see if and how interested you might be in participating. <laughs> I thought so. Listen, I wanted to know. I'm also the village manager, but for the purposes of this discussion, I'm calling this Howard Brown Consultant, just to keep things clear. Oh, I think, yeah, I think there's great potential for some financial opportunities for both of us. And I wanted to see when we could get together and talk a little bit more formally about that prospect. What's that? Oh, yeah, this is definitely a six-figure contract. And, you know, that is why you need to take the ability away from him. How easy and legal, unfortunately, legal, not ethical, not moral underhanded and dark, but given Mr. Brown's whew, shadows that have been cast through Opelaka, uh, Mike Iacona was run out of Orlando as a fire chief because of, get this, discriminatory practices. <laughs> so, <laughs> the irony in that is just incredible. Anyway, I'm going to leave you with those thoughts. And counsel, 
we look forward to an upcoming next four years. You got your work cut out for you. And uh, like everybody else out there, we're going to be watching. But here, Tam, we have a feeling that your foundation strength and your character is going to do things in the light with transparency and help the people in the village of Indian Town get back to putting a real community together, building some jobs, getting the water cleaned up. None of this this fluff and stuff. We know you're going to do the hard work, and we're watching. People of Indian Town, great job on the election. You voted. You got out. You made a difference. You did what everyone said couldn't be done, and each and every one of you made that difference. If a few of you had stayed home, this outcome would be completely different. You, the individual, made a difference.